Hello everybody, today we are going to talk about the thyroid gland. Tiny little butterfly shaped organ sitting in the anterior part of the neck. Does many things, controls metabolism, brain function, mood, growth, development, lots of important things. But today we're going to be talking through the key physiology, understanding all of the different hormone messages involved. This is going to be draw along physiology for the thyroid axis. So grab some paper, grab some pens, let's talk about the thyroid. Right, let's start with our basic structures. So first we are going to start with the hypothalamus sat within the brain. Hypothalamus. The next structure we need is the pituitary gland, which as you will remember is divided into anterior and posterior lobes. And then finally we have the thyroid gland itself, a sort of butterfly shape. We'll give it some, some little lines and our parathyroids as well, just to remind ourselves that they exist. Now we're going to use green and red for the purposes of this video. So green for positive feedback or upregulation and then red for a down regulating effect or a negative feedback. So the first step in our thyroid pathway is the release of TRH from the hypothalamus and that is thyrotropin releasing hormone. That goes and stimulates the pituitary gland, which then in turn causes the anterior pituitary gland to release TSH, or thyroid stimulating hormone, because this time it's actually acting on the thyroid gland itself, and it's going to be stimulating release of further hormones, so that's TSH. And then finally, the action of TSH on the thyroid gland causes the release of two further hormones, which are T3 and T4. Now the key thing to be aware of here is that T4 is the pro-hormone of T3. T3 being triiodothyronine, it's got three iodines in it, and T4, it's pro-hormone, we call thyroxine. So if we're so inclined, We can write them down. The other important thing to understand here is that only one of these hormones is biologically active. Only T3 is active within the body and exerts the effects more distally of the thyroid gland. T4 has to be converted into T3 in the peripheral tissues and virtually all cells contain the enzyme which allows this to happen. And it's not super important, but for those interested, the enzyme that carries out this function is called iodothyronine deiodinase. So now we've got our T4 and T3 circulating around. What does T3 do? There are some really key functions of T3. What does it do? It increases cardiovascular output. It increases catabolism. That is breakdown of large molecules into smaller ones. So it will help with breakdown of starches, proteins to provide energy. It increases your gastrointestinal function. And it also contributes to bone remodeling. Among many other things. So then how does self-regulation of thyroid hormones work? The presence of T3 and T4, so we're going to take our red now, have a negative feedback loop on both the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. 
That is to say that if you have excess or very high T3 and T4, you would expect to find low thyrotropin releasing hormone as the body is telling the brain not to make more and you would expect a low TSH as well because the function of thyroid stimulating hormone is essentially making T3 and T4. If you have enough or too much, you don't want to keep making more or it will make the problem worse. Conversely, if you have very low levels of T3 and T4, both the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland will detect this and increase your levels of TRH and TSH to try and overcome the shortage. It's a delicate balancing act. Now, there are two really key clinical conditions that you need to understand when it comes to the thyroid gland. And this condition of having too much T3 and T4 circulating we call hyperthyroidism or thyrotoxicosis. Having too little thyroid hormone T3 and T4 we call hypothyroidism, too little thyroid. Now, when it comes to hyperthyroidism, the really key condition that you need to know about is called Graves' disease. So we'll make some notes over here. As we said, it leads to a hyperthyroid state. And what happens normally, we'll just do a sort of magnified view here, is that in the cell membrane you have TSH receptors. We sometimes denote them as TSHR. And your thyroid hormone comes along and binds to these and then that sets off the chain of reactions inside the cell, which leads to more T3 and T4 being produced. That is a hormone always has to have something to bind to, to exert its actions. But what happens in Graves' disease, if this is our cell membrane, and this is our TSH receptor, this little circle, what happens is for various reasons, you develop antibodies which are circulating around and bind to the TSH receptor. And because these antibodies bind to the receptor and don't let go, it's constantly firing off. Regardless of how much negative feedback is going on, the only thing the thyroid gland cares about is that this receptor is active. And this causes people to enter a hyperthyroid state with some really key clinical signs that it's important to be able to recognize, including exophthalmos, pretibial myxedema, and a goiter in the neck from those swollen hyperactive thyroid tissues. Now, lastly, the other condition that you need to know about is something called Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And this instead tends to lead to a hypothyroid state or too little thyroid hormone. And this is a very superficial explanation, but what happens within the thyroid gland is you have a precursor to the thyroid hormones called thyroglobulin to which iodine needs to be added to produce T3 and T4. And this reaction is catalyzed by an enzyme called thyroid peroxidase or TPO. And what happens in Hashimoto's thyroiditis is there's always an antibody around. You develop antibodies against this enzyme, against thyroid peroxidase. This stops the enzyme being able to catalyze this reaction, adding iodine to thyroglobulin, which in turn means you can no longer produce T3 and T4 in the amounts you need it. And that's how it leaves us in a hypothyroid state. So just to summarize our entire diagram here, the hypothalamus produces TRH, which then acts on the pituitary gland and causes the anterior part of the pituitary gland to release thyroid stimulating hormone or TSH. TSH then stimulates the thyroid gland to produce T3 and T4. T4 is inactive but gets converted to T3, the active hormone in peripheral body tissues. The presence of T3 and T4 have a negative feedback loop effect on both the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland, meaning that we balance the amount of thyroid precursor hormones and thyroid hormones we need. 
There are two key conditions to know about. One is Graves' disease, where you develop antithyroid stimulating hormone receptor antibodies, which bind to that receptor and cause it to be permanently active, resulting in too much thyroid hormone. And the other key condition is Hashimoto's thyroiditis, where you develop antithyroid peroxidase, anti-TPO antibodies, which make us unable to produce the T3 and T4 hormones, which rely on the presence of this enzyme thyroid peroxidase. And so we instead end up in a hypothyroid state. So thank you for watching everyone. That is a go through the thyroid axis, the key hormones and messages involved and the key clinical conditions that you need to associate with it. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to see more like this, let me know. Any particular topics, conditions, etc. we want to discuss in this format. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time.